Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about Apple's Notary tool. Since about maybe 2023, Apple has recommended that we use their new Notary tool in order to sign our products. This is basically to make sure that everything that is used or installed on more up-to-date and modern Mac OS's is trusted and this is done through their own servers and in order to make sure that we're trusted you need to have an Apple developer account as well as run through Notary tool. I have a previous tutorial up here on how to sign, notarize, and staple uh, tools that you create for Macs. That is a bit outdated now, so I'm going to make this updated tutorial using Apple's recommendation of Notary Tool. It actually makes things a lot easier and faster, and you'll see why very shortly. So here on my Mac, I'm going to be using uh, this Find My AEP plugin that I helped develop, which is a simple After Effects general plugin menu item that opens up the folder where your current After Effects project is located. You can get that for free on AE scripts, of course, um, but we're basically just going to have a command line open and everything we need will work inside of command line. So to get started, we need to do XC run. This is the same actually as previously when I believe the tool was called code sign, but now instead of code sign, we're going to say notary tool. The first thing we need to do is create a credential. This is basically going to be our account, which is linked to our developer setup. And this will make it super easy in the future to just call a single thing like a tutorial account or NT productions. And using that little bit of text, it will have all of our credentials. We can easily sign whatever we want, whether you're working for multiple different organizations or individually. So we're gonna say then store dash credentials. And then we need to give it a tag called Apple ID. And then you need to provide your actual Apple ID. And this is going to be equivalent to your Apple email. So you can put in your Apple ID email that's associated with your particular developer account. And then we need another tag called team ID. If you're not already familiar, a team ID is basically a alphanumeric code associated with a particular organization set up setting up through your developer account. In my case, the Apple ID here is this and that is sort of an identifier for me when I sign things as a freelancer that I use this particular ID. If you had say another job where you sign things in a separate account or a separate ID, you may want to put that as well. Now let's go ahead and hit enter. And now it says this process stores your credentials securely in the keychain, your Apple uh, computer keychain. You reference these credentials later by using a profile name. So let's go ahead and set up a simple name. We'll just say tutorial test, hit enter. And now we need to provide our app specific password for my particular account. Now your app specific password is very secret. So don't show anyone this, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste mine in here, enter. And now it's going to validate your credentials. As you can see, it says success, your credentials are validated, saved to the keychain, and now you can use them by specifying keychain profile, tutorial test. If you're not familiar with what your app specific password is, it's in this sort of format right here, where you have four different sections, and it should have been set up when you first created your account or your particular organization connection. And again, it is something quite private, so don't share with anyone because it can use to sign things and access a lot of information. All right, so that's pretty much the setup. Once you do that, everything from here on out is super simple. So we're gonna use this dot plugin file as an example to show you how easy it is to use these new tutorial credentials in order to sign, staple, notarize, and all that stuff. So all we need to do now to go ahead and get started, we'll say XC run again, and we need to run the notary tool. And what are we what command are we going to run from the notary tool? Well, we want to this time submit something via notary tool. What are we going to submit? Well, let's go ahead and submit our plugin file, but it's not going to accept a dot plugin file. So what we need to first do is go ahead and compress it into a zip file. And then we'll use that zip file instead of the dot plugin file, just to make sure that it will work. Otherwise, you will get an error. And then like it says up here, we need to specify the keychain profile. And what's the keychain profile? It's tutorial test. And there's one last thing we can do, which is called a wait tag. And this wait tag is essentially going to wait until it's finished notarizing before it finishes out uh, the sort of command code that's going to be run. So we'll hit enter and it's going to conduct pre-submission tests. And as you can see, it's a very small file, 56 kilobytes. 
So it will show the upload progress. If you were doing something like a DMG file with that was a very large extension or something, you would see the upload progress slowly ticking along. And that's sort of where the wait comes in handy. You don't have to sit there and hope that it was uploaded successfully. It will wait until the upload is complete before it moves on to saying, waiting for the process to complete, accepted, processing complete. Here's an ID for your submission and it will say accepted or rejected if there's any particular issues. If it was rejected, you can use the ID to look that up later, but in this case, an easy success. Now, with any time that we're going to then need to staple our plugin file again, we need to unzip what we just signed because all the contents in here are now going to be signed slash notarized via this account. So we're gonna go ahead and just do our normal staple process, which is XC run. We're gonna call the stapler and we're going to staple this plugin file. And now you can see the staple is validated and successful. And now we have our plugin file that's now been uploaded to the Apple servers, verified by them, submitted successfully. And now when we uh, unzip it and staple it, it's going to also work offline. As a reminder, the notarization process is just to get accepted on the Apple servers to make sure when any user, regardless of uh, their Mac, uh, installs it, that it's going to trust that. Otherwise, they're gonna get a pop-up that says, whoa, 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 unknown developer, are you sure you want to install this? Sometimes they can't even do that. Sometimes they can override it, which is something you don't want to have to deal with, obviously, from customer feedback. And then the stapling process enables it to be used offline. So this staple shows that, hey, this is like a ticket that shows Apple already looked at this file and it's valid. Even though you're offline and we can't connect to the Apple servers, this is all good. So all you have to do is sort of set up an account or credentials using Notary Tool. In this case, we did tutorial test, use your app specific password to enable it and create it, and then simply sign your plugin file, your DMG, zip it if required, and send it off to the servers. Use the wait command to make sure that everything is completed. And once it's completed, you can unzip it or simply take the file that was completed, staple it, and it's ready for distribution. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon, of course, and we'll see you next time.